Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. And today's episode is video number two on this Ryobi um, lawnmower. In the previous video, you saw you saw me get the um, gearbox changed over, bits and pieces to get the lawnmower up and running. It was running, but then developed a fuel leak, and also the engine would not cut off when you release the handle, and it needs to as a safety feature. Incidentally, if it's your first time watching Mixed Mowers, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, and set your notifications to all. And that way you'll be told one done a video or two of on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's see if we can't finish off this Ryobi lawnmower. Right, so as some of you may have seen in the previous video, um, this lawnmower was running, but um, it refused to stop, which I can't have. It's got, it's, the lawnmower has to stop when you release the handle and it's not doing so at the moment. So um, that I need to sort out. Just want to get a 10 mil reducer socket on my impact to get inside the pull cord assembly to remove these, these bolts. There's one, two, already loose I think. Oh no, it's got one already in there. Let me fish that out. <laughs> it's stuck. Stuck at the first hurdle here. Yeah. Trying to take this uh, this 10 mil nut out here it is. There's that one as well. Let's have him out whilst we're there. So yeah, it was, it wasn't stopping, and that's no good to anyone if it doesn't stop. So when you release the dead man's handle, it should theoretically um, cut the engine, and it's not. So we need to understand the reason behind that, and I need to switch the engine round so I can see the dead man's handle and uh, this operation here. All this is what will come off all of this caper. Got to figure out how that will come up in a minute. That's it, like that. And then we can get around the other side and have a look, look at this micro switch. Because there should be a switch on here that stops it. If not, it'll be here, down there. If not, we'll have to uh, adjust it. So I'll turn it around and we'll have a closer look. Well, I've got it as close as I can dare have you. And the first thing is, we need to just understand why this isn't cutting out. There is a dead man's handle switch up underneath here, which should short out when the um, handle is released. And my guessing is it's not doing it. Because it should send a little tiny signal um, to it. So if I activate the dead man's handle and pull that back and secure it back, I'll try and get you a better view if I can. Give me two ticks. Well, I've got you looking down on top of a cat on top of him um mow as much as I can. That's the engine um, brake there, so it's your brake and the switch is underneath. And by activating the, the dead man's handle, should then pull back um the uh the marker switch. Which it does. So let me now clamp that off. Well, let me try you there. That's a bit of a bit of a better view. So what I've done is I've um, tied back the handle and um, that releases a brake. Now up here, just there, there's a little tiny piece of metal. See that sticking out? Now when you um, close, let go of the handle, this brake will go towards the, towards the flywheel and slow the engine down. And this should short out um, the, the spark plug. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release that now and just see if that's making contact with um with said brake underneath and i would say it is to a degree not all the way possibly so what i'm going to do is i'm going to tie back the handle again i'm just going to encourage this little tiny lever bit of metal up just a smidge like so okay and then I'll put a little bit of um, WD-40 on that and a little bit of sandpaper just so um, we can just clean that little surface area up. Put some sandpaper here to hand. 
We don't want a lot. We want just enough just to clean that terminal up. And then we're going to turn it round and try and clean underneath here as well. Just there. Like so. Okay, so now when we release the handle, that should now make contact with this arm here, which it does, I can feel it. Yeah, see so how it's clicking over top? That should now send the signal to a spark plug to say, um, stop, I've had enough. So I think that should have cured it. We can't uh, test it until obviously it's up on the, uh, when it's up and running. But now that, that should, that looks very advanced up there. So that, that should short that out. If not, the switch may be faulty. And uh, I'll have a spare for that on, uh, on the other machine. So we'll try that first, see how that goes. Hopefully that'll send the signal. So I'm pretty sure that's, that should now work. So I'll have to leave that now. So we'll now put these covers back on. Which are a bit dusty. Um, it might have come back off again. I might have to renew the switch, but uh, we shall see how we get on. So then we go onto there, happy with that, and then I want the cover, fuel cap off. Never a good design if you've got to remove the fuel cap to put one of these on because uh, you encourage all the dirt into the tank. I'm not a fan of that. <clears throat> Help it settle down into its home. What's occurring? Let's put the fuel cap on. We're not going to have no dirt in the car, but in that fuel tank. Down a little bit, feeling a bit naughty. Three ten mils, one a bit fierce. <laughs> That on now. That should pull over. Yeah, no problem. Happy with that. <clears throat> I'll take the dead man's hand off. So now at least that, uh, that brake is now on. Turn it back round and we want to have a look at this carburetor to see why it was leaking. Right. So to remove all this lot, you've got to take this off, which will involve no doubt taking the wheel off. You can find get a tight, get a 10mm ratchet spanner behind there. Possibly, which would be great if I can. I don't want to ever get. No, I can't get high enough in the um in the wheel. So let's try and loosen that off by hand. It's a bit of a faff. By the time I've got this done, I might as well just uh, take the wheel off and uh, use the impact on it. It's coming. So loosen that off. Yeah, I decided to do a part two because I'm trying to keep my videos to about 30 minutes if I can. And so many people are commenting saying, oh, you didn't show that, you didn't show this, you didn't show that. So, you know, if, if that's the case, I'm going to have to start doing part ones, part twos, part three, part fours. But we get a bit monotonous after a while. I like to try and get a video done and move on to the next. Yeah, it's the same time for me, but some viewers get a bit, uh, a bit what's the name with it, you know. I don't like seeing multiple parts on videos I don't give enough room in there do they they don't want you to take that out so that's got to come out now oh, do you know what after all of that it's going to be just as easy to take that wheel off 
because you can't get um, you can't get the bar out behind it. What was that? A Twelve. Dropped on that. Never find that. Never find that in a million years. Can't come back to it. There's a nut and a washer going underneath. I think the nut might be actually here. There's a there's a bearing. Yeah, I've got the nut. Uh, it's just a washer, so I've got plenty of those. So let's now remove that height adjustment without jamming it on my fingers. I now got up out of the way with the forceps. That's about as clear as I want it. And then we can now remove that. There's the air filter I was talking about in, in the previous video. Lots of fuel in here, which tells me we do have a, a fueling issue. Let me grab a 10 mil socket. Fuel's turned off. And I do have a spare carburetor if need be. I don't want to use it, I'd much rather keep what I've got and have it as a complete spare. Now that should drift off. Got an air, air breather. I'll take off of this end. Oh, lots of smeg in here. Lots of smeg. I'm trying to loosen that off. It's leaking behind here somewhere. Oh, but it's prime like there, so the bowl is um the bowl is uh stuck. But at the moment I can't even release this off. Get a pair of uh, long nose snips, a long nose pliers. I'll remove that throttle arm and the spring looks a bit bent as well. That needs to be work. There's the spring. See that's all bent up there, look. That's all bent. So cheaply made. Um, trying to encourage this carburetor to come off, but at the moment I can't get it to even run um, off of these uh, bolts. Let's remove that. I don't think the fuel pipe is holding it. How much fuel pipe I've got? I should have enough there in case it splits. It's just going to because they're hideous pipes. It is to split. That's it. So before I forget, let's uh, snip that off. I'm going to put an, a new bit sort of on the hose. That should fit. I should be able to pull that round. Yeah, there's enough on there for me. If not, I've got a spare one of the engine. Okay, that's all off. Fuel clamp. Come off of there. What we've got going on behind here? Lots of smeg, lots of dirt. Yeah, look at all this stuff in here. This is where it's been sat, I think. So that is all cleaning off. That space, all is cleaning off. That's all, uh, all manky. So I'll give that a clean, and then we'll uh, put this on the bench and I'll look at this carburetor because uh, it's leaking. So I can't even hear the float moving. So we'll have a look. I'm back in two ticks. Right, I've got the zoomed right in. So I'll get my, my tool bench over, tool trolley. I need a few tools off of that initially. So let's make a start. Let's crack that open. Let's see what we got. Lots of fuel in there, which is good. Nice to see lots of fuel. The bowl, oh, yeah, that's a shame. yeah, see that that's why it was leaking. The o ring wasn't in there properly. Now, I do have some new o rings which I'm going to try today, which I picked up from uh, Amazon. So, that's possibly why it was leaking initially. Let's take that out. I might as well do a full clean whilst we're in here. Got a um, jet to take out of here. The primer works, I know it does because I saw it, I saw it pumping fuel through the uh, through the main tube. I can come off. 
this gasket looks absolutely worn. I'll leave it for now. Um, that's actually, in fact, that's actually gasket glue, I think. Yeah, someone's put gasket glue on there because that's not, yeah, that's gasket glue. Absolutely yards of it on there. Let's take that gasket off. If I come off, do I dare? I think that's why I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove all of that um, gasket glue because it's making ridges. It's not doing its job, is it? And I think someone thought it was leaking out of the um, back of a carburetor. In fact, it wasn't it was leaking out the bottom through here because the bowl gasket wasn't on right. I think that's the issue with this. So I'll take all that stuff off. That's horrible muck. That old gasket glue. But we should see. I might be wrong. Um, right, where was I? I got interrupted. Um, let's take this um, main jet out. If it'll come. Cool. Yeah. Now I've got you on full zoom, so hopefully you're going to get a nice close-up version of this carburetor. Oh, they come out far too easy what I normally do. Um, we've got a slow idle jet to remove down here as well. I've given up counting these now because you just I just sent about two and a half threads. You can always adjust it if need be. Take that out. And you've got this slow idle jet just here. These are different because they uh, look like they actually uh, are flush. Take that out. Now, put that to one side because they're a bit of a pickle. Um, if you damage the uh, damage the old overing on them, um, so that's just large old jet going in there. We've got the main jet and tube come out of there, and we're going to blast this through with some WD-40. And all this stuff in here looks. This is all carb cleaner. All in here. All carb cleaner. No wonder it was leaking. So all wants to be taken out and a good all round clean. So you see me do this before. For those of you that don't like them, you can always zip forward. For those of you who do, sit back, have a cup of coffee or something and enjoy it. So we're going to go into here. We're just going to put into every single hole that we can to get fluid to come out and run. Um, there's not one in there that's hidden actually in there. Bit of a sneaky peek, I don't know if I can get into that one. Unless someone's already been in. Looks like someone's already been in there. Can't get that one out. I have to come through that way with it. And put the air compressor on it. Run that through there. That's why these carburetors don't run very well because they, they, they're hiding the jets. There's a, there's a little jet in there saying that's capped right off. I don't want to get in there. Never mind. Clean that one out. I uh, can get into there, but only put a little bit in there because that's one weighed. Turn it around. We've got one there to do. One there to do. That's actually got a gasket cleaner in there. I'm going to feel it. Is that running? There's actually a gasket cleaner in that jet. That's not going to run. It's never going to run. Never, 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 never. So I want to um, get a, bit, a dental pick first. There's some stuff in there. I know there is, because I felt it. There's a bit. I can see the jet now. I have going to see the old jet. It's just there. Yeah, it's running out the back of the carb. I can see it. There you go. That wasn't running a minute ago. I don't think it was. And that's a slow idle. That's running out of the top as it should do. Which is good. There should be a little tiny hole in there. Gasket sealer, eh? It is a pickle. Yeah, it's all running now. Try and pour some stuff into there if I can get it to fill. And that come out the top. Get a bit of a, a primer. Look at 
stuff coming out of there. That's black. Whatever that was. We'll do that again. That's black, whatever come out of there. Black bits. Okay, so that's that carb right now done. That can go out of the way there. Look at the old main. Yeah, the main the main jet's good. Very good. I might just give it a little tiny rim just to help it along. It didn't necessarily need it, but uh, sometimes it just helps. It's been sat a while, so you don't actually know how big that's supposed to be. So. Just try and run a jet in, and a file in, sorry. Let's pick the right one. Should be one of these ones. Should be that one there, I think. That's too big. That one. That's fine. Just want to take a little bit of stuff off. Not a lot. I think it was obvious out of the way. Gasket glues everywhere. Just want to try and run just a little bit off. Not, not a great deal. As one of my subscribers, he said he messaged me the other week saying he had a problem with a mountfield lawnmower 414, which was hunting and surging, and he used this technique after two or three attempts actually. But on the third attempt, he got it just, just right. So that's cool, that's nice and big now. There was no way I've, ever, I've even took that much material off, so I think that was partially blocked. Let's check the old tube. It's going to run his all the holes. That was blocked was not no more at the top as well there's no telling how far this older Gasket glue got in. There's no one up here as well. I don't forget that one. That's saying. That's it. Right, let's give that a clean. Cover, block some of the holes up so it comes out of one and then move it up the other end. It comes out of the bottom and just block, block different holes up at a time just so it gets it to run nicely. That's it. So happy with that. I'm going to put the one side and the main jet. Where the main jet go? Down there. Get one more quick blast through. That's better. It's a massive hole in there now, huge. What's that? That's off the carburetor. Give that a bit of a clean off, a bit of a happy birthday. My hands are covered in this black stuff. Give that bowl a bit of a, a scrapage. It's not too bad. Mm, wire brush. to try and improve some of it. It's only rust. Be right. That's that done. That's it. Uh, I'll slow jet. Let's see how that's doing. Oh, blocked. Not now. That's now running. Yeah, WD-40 again. Running as well as I would like. So, smallest file possible. Tiddly one, which is that one there. Just going to incorporate that to go into there. I want to see it come through the bottom. That's, it. That's better. Now it should run. Yeah. I need that W40 on this can, that's why that's running better now. Good, good. Right, that's that done. So I'm going to compress this off with an air compressor, blow the holes out, and then I come back, um, it'll be uh, fully assembled, and uh, I'm going to put a new O-ring on. I've got a new pack of O-rings uh, from Amazon, because this one is knackapooed. That's gone. So I'm going to put a new O-ring on it. Now that can be a test, because I don't actually know if... 
fact they're actually um, petrol resistant. It didn't actually say, and it's my fault for slipping up on it. Let me try and find them. I had a big brand new box of them somewhere. Here we are. Down here. Got me some Amazon. See if they have a search around O ring, carburetor O rings, and stuff like that. Oh, you found it under. Um, and it comes with about first 35,000 O rings on it. There you go. I think it's that one. Uh, R31s. I think they're the ones. Um, let's find the uh, carburetor. Yeah, that's the one. That's it. I'm going to try and fit them to it. See what difference that makes. So they are round, and when you, when you compress them down with the uh, the old bowl, it should uh, form quite a good seal. So we're going to have a go at using one of these today, see what, see what that does. See if it doesn't compress down to where I want it. And then um, we'll try that. Right, carburetors when I've fully packed together. I'll clean it out behind there as well with gasket glue and put the new O-ring on as well. Hopefully that's going to seal. We shall see. It's a bit of an experiment, really. A bit of rag to try and take off a bit more of this carburetor gunk where I can. I don't have a gasket for us, I might have to make a gasket if need be. I've got some gasket paper I can use. And I want to try and take off this one. See what's on here. Yeah, all types of gasket glue on here and all. The problem is if it's if you don't take it off, then um it's never gonna never gonna seal. Oh, that's better. It's got a breather hole in there, see that's gasket glue there. And on the back. Oh my lord, smothered on there. Right. That can have a back on. That's good. Um carburetor on. Two little tiny metal eyelets. I think that goes on the air on the air intake box. They go in there. Little spacers. Might be best to take it from the back. Oh, that's got one. I'll go to the back of that one. And again, there's gasket glue on the back here as well. And you need it to run because that's where your primer. Um, goes. Let me find me a dental pick. So I wasn't expecting there'd be a bit of stuff on the back of there. See in here, this is where your, your primer primes all the stuff and there's gasket glue in there. See that? That's why. That was blocked at the back. Take all that out be in there we need that that's how you are prime your prime your it can't write it was priming um so now as you see i've got enough fuel hose here so i think i possibly have i might have to drop this off a touch off this car off this tank just to slacken it off a bit just to give me about another another three or four mil will be good don't want a lot. Watch me to pull this off now, and it's uh, and it's um, empty fuel all over it, all over the engine. That's it. That's gonna be enough. This pipe is quite solid. Let me run that uh, down to there. So I want the um, fuel clamp, a pair of long nose snips. Oh, 
still has clamp. I can a bit more. I'll put it back on in a minute. I think that's about it. Without damaging it anymore. That's it. Right, well, that's on. I can now fit that clamp over top of that. Uh, on like there. Uh, that fit perfectly. Uh, let's remove that. So that's all on. And now I'll try and prime this carburetor. So got a bit of pressure coming out of there now. Try and come out. Yeah, priming lovely. Yeah, that primed beautifully. So, a bit of a rag. Dry under there. So I'll see if I'm getting any leaks. Uh, this spring I'm not happy with, but it'll have to do for now. That goes on there. That goes in there. Looks like that's been stretched to a degree. I might have to work on that. Or take one of a donor machine. That's any better. Doesn't seem to want to flex a lot. But it's working. We've got no fuelage coming out the back of this here, so that tells me that's good. Uh, put this one on now, I think. Yeah. So air breather pipe goes on. I've got to push that back so that fuel hose doesn't impinge upon, upon the governor. That one goes on. That one goes on. So we're going to tighten that down with the two 10 mils. And then that should form the seal that we need. There's one. Let's push them down first and before we knock them up. One. Two. So that's that carburetor and now all on and priming and not seeing no leaks. I'm hoping that's done it. Got a lot of fuel on this filter where it was leaking beforehand. You see some fuel come out of here in a minute because I've been priming it. Priming lovely actually. Let's take some of this petrol out of this filter. I'm out of rags now, it's my last rag. I'm going to get, I'll buy some more rags. I'll buy them by the bag load if I go through them so much. That goes on to there. That clamp down to there. That's all working. We can now um, put the height adjustment on next. I should be that way. Bit fiddly. <laughs> Anyone got any spare hands? I'm not using. Got a 10 mil nut to go onto there. That's got to go on. That's it there. And I've dropped a washer, didn't I? So I've got a tub of spare washers behind me in the tray. Which again I got off of Amazon, just a selection of washers. That one looks like a suitable candidate. That don't fit. Uh, I don't want to put the spring washer in if I can help it. That one there. Then. That's a kitty. All these little tiny packets are coming handy, you know. I just want myself a load of self tappers as well, and a load of ring uh, um, uh, roll pins as well. I've got a machine coming in that needs new roll pins. Which you'll see a video on soon on that. Let's do that up. Not too tight because it's got a nylon nylon washer, uh, nylon lock in that on there anyway. I then want to bring in the wheel. And that bearing is good. Yeah, both good. Just come out. Let's sit 
gets on there. 12 mil nut goes onto that one. I'm still looking for fuel, but no fuel come down as of yet. So it looks like we may have sussed it. Uh, 10 mils in the wrong place. 12. That does that. I'll tell you something, this trolley that my mate Tommy, my old subscriber Tom, he uh, bought me this tall trolley. Absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> Fantastic way to work. Uh, super impressed with that. Right, high controls on. That's all still tensioned. Carburetor has been cleaned and done. It's not leaking. Still seeing no fuel coming out of there. And that's with those new set of O-rings um, pack I've bought as well. So um, I think we're there. So it should now run. Um, but we need to double check that the switch is working. That's what I need to do next. So back outside. Back outside with it and we give it another fire and hopefully this time it will just cut out as and when I'm, I require it to. If not, it'll be uh, back in the shed again, all this back off and I should use the donor switch on the other side, but hopefully it will work. So meet me outside in two ticks. Right, let's go put a wall cover on. And we give it a pump. No fuel leak. And we'll see what happens. So it now stops and starts as it should do. Okay, Ryby lawnmower now all up and running. It's on its test. It might try and tweak just with the old throttle. I may even replace that spring as well, get a bit more tension on the governor arm. But it's all running and a little bit of smoke, but it has been tipped up, mucked about, and all the rest of it over the past couple of days. So I've not been running for a little while, I'm guessing. So about to have its 15 minute test, so it performs. The drive now works, it cuts, um, cuts out when you want it to. Um, the, there's no fuel leaks either, which is fantastic. Plus, in the previous video, I've done all the gearbox, all that sort of stuff. So now I have an up and running lawnmower. And I've still got the hate of 48 left to do, just waiting on parts for that to come on in. So I hope you enjoyed this little episode of Mixed Mowers. Um, if you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. And also give it a thumbs up to show appreciation for the channel. Any comments you've got, stick them down below in your comment section. And I'll try and reply to all the comments that I receive. I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But to people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.